looking back at my parents' fate. It's hard to see how they once romantically passed through the Eden Gate, into that land of milk and money, where they fell hopelessly in love and felt the urge to passionately procreate, after which they wore the mortgage mask, the 25-year servile task, and eventually paid back the bank manager his 7% overdraft. They scrimped and scraped in the steel city strife, then this beleaguered husband and wife decided to search out for Big Will Party and start a brand new life. They both sat before the monk-faced magistrate, who annulled their vows of matrimony and awarded one spouse the house and the other a monthly allowance of alimony. Friends and family did try to console and commiserate, all in vain and far too late, due to both injured parties now having hearts made of suede and heads full of hate. Enjoy the poem. Thank you. The butterflies of love used to tingle their tummies in the bedroom. The only things that flutter into flight these days are the brain bats that roost on the dark side of their moon. Those wonderful sap-rising summers of youth bathing and basking in the honey-suttling heat. All have long since given way to the wintry parental purgatory of listening to the child's non-stop grizzling greet. Their minds' eye mirrors used to reflect the lustful light of their soulmate. Now all they project to each other is the myopic melancholia of their forthcoming fate. So easily they've decanted the depressions into the children's stain-free souls. They have milk-sopped the menstruating misery like a blood consummate bread roll. Carefreely they carried a countenance of fresh-faced rose. Now behind their bambi brown eyes lives the callous conscience of a carrion crow. Their mouth daggers have become so scalpel sharp they can hardly speak a syllable without wounding or cutting out each other's heart. The waters and wells have all been poisoned dead and the fertile Garden of Eden, well, that's been scorched to a fiery red. So tarnished lie the once treasured heirlooms love lockets, dinner services, and the Welsh-made wedding spoons. Mmm, they sleep in separate beds and live in different rooms. He chats with some exotic chick on Zoom while she makes love to a Mills and Boone.